Greetings and salutations. I am your host, Pat626, and it is time for Subculture Talk. I host Subculture Shock Sunday nights at 10 p.m., where I play the best in new goth, industrial, dark wave, death rock, EBM, synth pop, and post punk. And a band that I've been very happy to play for the past three years is Hertzfall. Uh, and apparently I was like one of the the uh, first in America to even introduce folks to them. So I'm really happy to welcome Sam Harrison M into the studio tonight of Hertzfall. How's it going, Sam? I'm good. Thank you very much for having me, Pat. Uh, it's my pleasure. Like, thank you very much. This is... Uh, I like it when when folks contact me and are like, hey, you want to talk about my band? Because I was talking about your band anyway, so I might as well talk about your band with you. Yeah, that seems sensible. Yeah, I mean, I just saw you doing some of these with other people. I was like, I can talk. (laughs) You want to talk to me? Um, And yeah, you've just been a supporter of ours for so long and played, uh, you know, pretty much all of our stuff, I think. if right from the beginning so i was like yeah we have to do it I was speaking to my bandmate just on tuesday and he was like oh yeah pat yeah like pat was playing that like stuff you might remember the death notes uh-huh. and some other things that jamie was in my keyboard player jamie okay um yeah he he thinks you're great so Aww. yeah passing that on <laughs> well i it is my pleasure to play good music so what I tend to do, uh, I start off the show with what I like to call the the supervillain origin story. So you make, mm. you know, dark alternative music. How did you get into it as a listener? And then eventually, you know, I'm not even talking about making it. Just what made you start listening to music like this to begin with? Oh, wow. You know, I revised all these things about, like, you know, all of this sort of stuff, and now I've just gone completely blank. Um, <laughs> what made me listen to it? I think it was my mum. So she has quite an eclectic taste in music, actually. And, like, so she'd drive me to school every day, and she would put on CDs because it was, you know, a very long time ago. Um, (laughs) when that was a thing Um, and she would play all sorts and I feel like looking back on it like that was my real education not the school it was the drive to school where she would play me like even just like the best of the 80s and I'd hear like Depeche Mode, Duran Duran, Kate Bush and just be like whoa you know Adam and the Ants and just get all this stuff in my head and then eventually I kind of latched on to more of it so i was like okay i need more of this depeche mode stuff and i had the cures greatest hits off out of my mom's car um and i think then what happened is when i started actually making music it it wasn't like this at all i was very much into like metal like new metal was really big when i was a teenager um yeah and then when i kind of got sick of that i kind of came back to my mom's stuff and um found that my voice suited that more and uh yeah the rest is history so what about it uh what about you know your mom's stuff that you know the depeche mode Mm -hmm. uh the cure things like that what what made what about that made you think oh my my i agree with you that your voice does fit with this but thank you but why why do you feel like that called out to you more than metal did? I mean, when I first started singing, I didn't really feel like I had a lot of choice. So it was very much like teenagers messing around. You know, it was kind of like I was always singing because I just like music. And it was like, oh, and you know, boys don't want to sing. I don't know if it's the same in the States, but like in the UK, it's like, boys don't want to sing it's like feminine so it's really hard to find a lead singer in a band when you're like a teenager um so i was really lucky that it was like oh you know you don't sound terrible like i did by the way (laughs) (laughs) i'm trying to 
push my vocal cords, damaging them, singing ACDC and Guns N' Roses, which, yeah, with terrible technique, can you imagine? Um, but then, um, so what is it about goth uh, and kind of that sort of music that reached me? I think eventually, yeah, I just got kind of sick of the, the metal, like that served its purpose. I got my angst out and all that, but then it was kind of like, the sadness stayed <laughs> and I was like I was always drawn to more kind of gothic metal bands anyway so then I was like what is it I like about them so then I suppose I kind of went um, I suppose Evanescence was my gateway drug if you like and then from then I discovered Lacuna Coral Nightwish within Temptation went down that rabbit hole Evanescence was um, a lot of people's gateway drug I owe them a lot seriously to yeah. this day <laughs> And I still like them, you know, um, it's cool. But um, yeah, that was definitely a gateway drug. And um, oh, and it was actually through a review of Evanescence. So um, I saw this review, I think it was Kerrang! or Metal Hammer or something. It was saying like, um, they're a blend of Linkin Park and Tori Amos. And I was like, obviously, I know Linkin Park. They were the biggest band in the world at that point. But I was like, what the hell is Tori Amos? So I go to my <laughs> dad's CD collection. <laughs> this was another light bulb moment. I put it on. I think I had Little Earthquakes and her greatest hits, Tales of Library. <sighs> my mind was blown, like, again, like, even more than Evanescence and Depression Mode and all that. I was like, oh, my God. Like, okay, you can be weird but kind of pretty at the same time. You can be dark but it can sound light. And you can write songs and you can be weird. I was just like, Pfft. So, um... Yeah, um, so the, all of that's going on. And then I was auditioning for other bands. So I went off to university in London and um, still flogging that metal horse, even though I was listening to kind of like other stuff, um, you know, more of this sort of stuff. Um, and when did the switch happen? I'm trying to think. It was My Dying Bride. Do you know that band? I, I've no. heard of them, but I've never actually like ah. heard them. You might like them, you might like So they come under like doom metal, but okay. it's very goth, like there's a lot of spoken word. Um, you might know Paradise Lost. I do, um, I love they were Paradise label mates. Lost. Right, okay. right, they're All comparable, right. definitely. Um, right. My Dying Bride are a lot slower, a lot dirgier, less metal, even okay. though they still come under metal. Anyway, so I can do, a, my voice sounds pretty much exactly like his without trying, and it's so eerie like people would tell me that and I'm like oh who's this and I listened to them and I think it was then that I started to get more into the goth stuff because I sort of also get told I say sound like um Dave from Depeche Mode mm -hmm. so I was kind of like okay well I'm gonna try and sound like that and see where that leads me and it kind of worked out um I felt more comfortable I think I sounded better I got lessons as well and um so yeah the, the kind of everything married together like the kind of my tastes and my abilities my interests and then eventually um i found this band hurtsful who in 2018 right at the beginning of 2018 they were already formed with some members of the death notes um they've been looking for a singer for like a really long time um i think almost a full year it was almost like a x factor or american idol or something kind of a process um where they narrowed it down to me and another guy i never met him or heard him by the way i mean i hope he's doing well um and they voted almost unanimously for me um so in the initial advert which i found on join my band dot com or co.uk i don't remember um they put up a few demos on soundcloud so linked from join my band and one of them was lucid okay and they were like do something with this and i was like okay like and i just started making noises what i sent back to them is pretty much what is on our debut single lucid um i re-recorded it got, right. got a better vocal take but the melodies the lyrics it's almost exactly what just came up because I was so inspired I was like yes this is what I'm gonna do no doubt in my mind um, 
So yeah, that's that's how it all started. That's why. Yeah, you took the words right out of my out of my mouth too, because I was going to ask what your audition song was. So mm-hmm. you you knocked their socks off so much they were like, oh, okay, we have our first single now. <laughs> yeah, that's literally it. There were two others as well, and I think we played them for a while, but yeah, they're not really in circulation anymore. Um, because then our sound changed because we lost our guitarist pretty early on, so. The kind of early stuff was very, I don't know, almost like the Smiths in places, but then like Sisters of Mercy in other places. So it was like, what were we doing there? Anyway, without guitarist, we were like, do we replace him? We don't need to, because Mike plays a six string bass, so he can get quite high. And um, we've got a keyboard player. We've got a, we had a live drummer at the time. Um, he has sadly passed away um, very recently. Um, My condolences. And, yeah, um, thank you. Um, and I was to, to his family again, because, yeah, it just came out of nowhere, really. Um, stomach cancer, um, I, I heard. So, and losing him as well, we have just replaced him with a drum machine. So, we've kind of gone from Joy Division to New Order in our sound. Um, we're still a little darker than New Order, I guess, but... You know, it's very much electronic, synthy rock now, rather than like the straight up post-punk that we started with. Um, we're a funny band because I was trying to think yesterday, like, what genre are we? You know, people like boxes, don't they? Yeah. Um, are we goth? I don't know. We're definitely gothic. And I don't mind the goth label, but then I look at bands that are goth and I'm like, we don't really sound like that. We're synth pop, we're post-punk. Or electronic rock with, I don't know. That's the thing is normally when you think of, of synth pop, um, you you tend to think of even even Depeche Mode with with maybe the exception of like Songs of Faith and Devotion uh, is a lot more is a lot lighter, a lot poppier than most of what you do. And and even Songs of Faith and Devotion had you know those those choir tracks on them, so. Uh, uh, like a lot of, yeah. of what you're doing has has that more like tried and true. Uh, I think I described it as classic goth sound, uh, and and yet you're trying to do it without without guitars. And it, it's interesting because I. I you again took the words right out of my mouth because I was going to ask you what, what made you want to do that. And, you know, just deciding not to replace the guitar player, that's it. But it's, it's interesting to me that you decided like not to change the underpinning of the songs that were still there. Right. There was a period of adaptation (laughs) where we were like, what that does this song sound naked like without it or do we need to change something and yeah we made a few tweaks but mostly we just left space so that you can hear the other instruments um yeah so we're very much keyboard driven and the vocals come out and you've got a you know mike with his with his bass and he even does bass solos you know Um, which is so cool it is i think it is yeah well, so this is, this is a thing, actually, that um, you're, you're almost ahead of your time because something that I have noticed this year especially, I saw it somewhat in 2021, but this year I've seen a lot of synth pop bands um, adding or leaning on live bass more. And, mm-hmm. and you guys are like a, you know, you, you, it, you're almost like a bass-centric band. You know, there. Yes, oh, there's yeah. there's keyboards in there, but the the bass and the vocals are really what's driving everything along. Probably because those mm. are the two live members of the band. Um, yeah, yeah, that that must be it. Um, yeah, I, I've got a friend at, at work who's like, he really enjoys our music, um, and he just one day just said to me, "Bass," <laughs> and I was like what and he's like yeah your music like there's a lot of bass isn't there i was like yeah yeah um and i'm fine with that you know 
he's a damn good bassist, so <laughs> I want him to play that bass. Um, well, uh, and he's in another band. I, I should give them a little plug too. They're called In Isolation. Okay. Um, you m- may have heard of them too. Um, they are very good. They they do a slightly different sound, but like, it doesn't sound ridiculous when we're on the same bill. Um, I, I think they're a little. Does more... he just stay on stage? <laughs> We let him, like, you know, have a minute, but um, it is very handy if we happen to be in the same festival or or gig or something. It's like, yeah, we share a band member. Like, he's got all this gear, you know, he's good to go. Um, Yeah, he must be tired after that, to be honest. Um, But that doesn't happen often. But yeah, they're a slightly different sound to us, but uh, we we complement each other. But uh, definitely, shout out to In Isolation. You should check them out too, anyone watching. I should actually. I, I'm not sure I have anything of that. So tell them to get on it. Tell them to send me stuff. Oh yeah, I will yeah. definitely. So, I I I think that though that this nails down now that I understand the history of the band, kind of the mm-hmm. the appealing thing about it because I was I was talking, uh, and and something that I kind of mentioned on the the page, advertising this talking to a friend about you know the troubles of keeping a classic goth sound fresh Mm. and it's it's like you all did that by accident because the you you've got like the the really good you know the 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 classic like post-punk uh cold wave joy division just driving drums going along with the bass but it's because the guitar is gone. Yeah. It, I don't know that that just that that makes it that makes it different. And, and it's like, OK, what do we do to fill that space? Just add a few more layers of keyboard yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, a little bit more vocal and uh, yeah, or let the bass go somewhere a little different that a bass wouldn't normally go and I really like that. I see it as a strength and I always have, but I remember when we started out as if we've been around years, but we kind of have now. If we started in 18, that that has been a fair few years. And I remember the first, as soon as we sort of lost the guitarist, it was kind of like trying to explain to people, like, we don't have a guitarist. It was like, what, what, what? Why? some people would be telling us like oh oh you need a guitarist like like something's missing it's like no you you don't get it like we knew it sounded good without and but now it seems like people just kind of accept it like people seem to like us live like no matter where we are and i think that's incredible like if we're just on the back of a trailer at a charity event and no one's ever heard us before people get into it um and i think that's a good sign we're doing something right you know um but yes i think you're absolutely right what you're saying before about us kind of being ahead of things because now i'm seeing a lot of people focusing on the bass or um not having live drums having drum machines like that's becoming a lot more common um so we're quite easy to move around now (laughs) you can just plug us in like (laughs) You know, plug us all into the PA, pretty much. Um, Good to go. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's great. Um, so yeah, I'm proud of our sound. I, I really like it, and uh, it will keep evolving, I'm sure. So to to continue on that, it's not just the lack of guitar though, and the and the bass solo that that makes it. Um, you know, uh, not to not to sound like a fan bee here, but. Uh, I am a fan B, so there we go. But the vocals are definitely, I, I feel like, yes, there's uh, there can be comparisons to, like, uh, Dave Gahn and mm. comparisons to, to vocalists, especially when you're doing kind of the lower stuff, uh, like Rosetta Stone and, and Suspiria and stuff like that. But you your range is pretty probably one of the wider ranges of goth vocalists today um was there any like 
did any thought go into like were were you out to 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 really like break some molds or was it just no this just this these high notes are just what sounds right here okay well first thank you <laughs> um that's that's really um that's really nice to hear you know after many years of you can't sing shut up to now uh, being told uh, how good my bring range me is the, <laughs> bring me the heads of the people who said that mm. Mm. you'd have a lot of heads <laughs> i'm saying that. you know to give them a little bit of you know their due I wasn't that good when I first started out because my technique was terrible. I wasn't comfortable in my sound, you know, but also they were just being mean. Like, you know, you've got to let a teenager make mistakes so that they can actually be good one day. Um, but anyway, it's so nice to hear that. And I know that you're not just saying that because you like the music or because I'm here and you're trying to be nice because... I'm not a nice person. <laughs> no, that's not. I'm sure you are. But you play our music and you don't have to, you know. Um, so that's a good sign. And other people are saying the same thing. Like, yeah, I like to hear that. A gigs people come up to me like, you've got an amazing voice and, and they will quite often mention the range. Like, and you remind me of so many different people at different points of the song. It's like, yeah, that's kind of what we want to do like if that if we can spark off in your mind and in your heart and soul you know that nostalgia for bands that you liked but make it a little fresh make it a little newer a bit different that's what we're trying to do um so sorry i'm rambling back to your point about my range um don't don't worry I, about rambling this is your interview <laughs> And everything I, you're saying is honest and 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 good, um, yeah. Because because you 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 hit the nail on the head that uh, you you are like you're thread you're walking that line between nostalgia and new, and I I feel mm. like the the range is a big part of it because um, the the majority uh, of goth music and I, I'm not complaining about it. I'm a huge Sisters of Mercy fan. Um, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, so, but uh, the majority of, of especially the the style of, of like post punk and dark wave that you tend to fall into, it leans towards just deep vocals, and you do that on a couple of your songs. But then you'll also just be just this this level. I, I don't know if crooning is the right word because crooning I still think of like a low pitch, but you're you're up there, you're soaring over the base um mm. so yeah i like that word soaring yeah. i like that one and i know exactly what you mean and i can almost feel the vibrations come through me like it, it's almost like um it's not quite belting but it's like a kind of a the the higher bits the the yeah. higher louder more um intense bits i guess we could say um yeah it's just what works to be honest like i will try all different things when we're writing the song i'll be like okay, I'm going to do all this bit really low. And then I'll be like, I'm going to do this really high. I'm going to do this falsetto. I'm going to do this. I'll keep playing around until I'm happy with it. Um, but at no point did I sit down and be like, I'm going to be the, you know, vocalist with the biggest range on the goth scene. That was never the plan. It's just that I, um, I've had so many different singing teachers. So I, I done classical, like opera. I've done, um, musical theater, I've done um, just popular song, um, choir, stuff like that. So I learned so many techniques from all of them. So I just take bits that I can do and that are applicable and yeah, what comes out comes out. Um, I just want it to sound good and I want it to be something that I would listen to. I want to be hooked um, and enjoy it. And if I enjoy it, then I think, well, Someone else might. You know. um. So that's something that you kind of mentioned in the interview, uh, uh, in the space before the interview, uh, that your your tendencies sometimes lean more not just towards like goth music, but also just pop music and mainstream and things like that. And mm -hmm. and it's funny because when you talked about that before the interview, it almost seemed like you were like, oh, you know. Uh, so, uh, so I, I might I not, might not be geeky enough or goth enough for the show, but I think that's one of the reasons your music works. 
Um, because this is something that uh, I talked about with a, a couple artists recently on this show. Um, Depeche Mode was not setting out to create synth pop and what synth pop would sound like. Joy Division wasn't trying to nail down the laws of this is what post punk sounds like. Sisters of Mercy don't even consider themselves goth and never have. Um, so I feel like it's 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 the bands that that see the people that came before them and just try to stick in those molds that have the hardest time really making music that engages me beyond the whole. Hey, I like this. It, it flicks the nostalgia vibe. But but I, I have a harder time differentiating their songs because they're not trying to add anything else to it. And Got it. yeah, and, and you don't you don't seem to have that problem. You seem to be perfectly happy with, you know what? I'm going to take this this uh, this really like classic goth bass line and drum line and I'm going to go just wild on top of it. I, I'm, I'm going to hit some some like I, I'm going to hit, hit, hit some like fine young cannibals hooks here like. Yeah, I've heard that comparison before as well. So, <laughs> yeah, you're not alone on that one. But um, yeah, that, that's exactly what it is about. I mean, I'm just doing whatever I think works and, and what feels right. Um, yeah, and I keep thinking, like, um, should I stick to one style? Like, you know, for some consistency, I was thinking, like, looking at an album, like, do I sing everything in a low voice or do I sing everything kind of in a baritone or even a tenor like and I'm like no like I'm, I need to flip and I need to weave between them and I need to use my mix I need to because that's what I do um, so I will not deny those parts of me and it sounds like you really like it so I think I uh, know fans and shows like it so I just think yeah I'm going to keep being weird I'm going to keep um, singing low high and everything in between because as long as that serves the song makes me happy um not happy you know what i mean goth happy <laughs> uh, content yes as long as i'm content yes. in my black heart then <laughs> i will keep doing it yeah definitely as long um, as i'm I'll, not I'll keep dead <laughs> well yeah and i'll keep doing it better that's the other thing is i'm trying to really get my technique like good because you can do damage folks if you don't <laughs> yeah, especially if you're doing big high belting and you're yep screaming your lungs out for three hours or whatever you gotta get that technique right um so i learned some really good things i've been on tiktok if you'd believe it seeing vocal coaches and some of the tips are amazing like you know like if you're going uh, like at the top of your range and you're starting to hear that strain if you just kind of push it into the nose um, you, you get a slightly more nasal sound and just reduce the volume slightly and you've alleviated all the tension and I was like yeah. okay I'm doing that and it worked um, <laughs> so yeah but Hurts I have lessons fall. too <laughs> Hurts Hurts fall. Fall. powered by TikTok <laughs> yeah oh you know what and I started a TikTok account for the band it's like can I not just sing and like write songs like why do I have to be a social media marketing manager now like there's so many platforms you know but yeah. um but it is amazing that we've had like several thousand views in in like the first 24 hours it's like you can't get those numbers anywhere else now no so. I mean that's fair it's I, I've considered a TikTok account and just posting like clips of these interviews but I have a mm -hmm. hard enough time uh just updating like the the Facebook and the Instagram account, like half the time I forget I have a Twitter. So. Right. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. you were the first band to contact me on Twitter, so now I'm glad that I remembered my login info. <laughs> me too. I'm glad you remembered it. But, um, yeah, I mean, I try not to get, like, stressed out with all them, but with all these platforms, but I do think, like, as a band, I feel like we should try and have a presence however small on all of them because you've got to meet people where they are um and what is really interesting to see is like the young generation coming up. i know i'm not old but like 
the younger ones like Gen Z, they uh, like they are seeing. I don't know. Are we in the third wave of goth resurgence? I, yes, I, I've, I, I, I've been talking about that, and I really okay. feel. I feel like like you and I. Um, I'm a little bit older than you, I think, um, but uh, I we I still came into to goth in like the '90s, and I feel like that was the second wave. Um, yeah. like the 90s and then like the the 90s kind of went into the 2000s and really like industrial and EBM and future pop kind of took over for a bit but we're seeing uh, a new wave of goth music that's been coming out um, probably really since about like 2017 2018 coincidentally mm -hmm. when I got started in subculture shock again after I came out of retirement I'm not gonna take I'm not saying I'm taking credit for it but I'm taking credit for it it was you. It was, <laughs> it was all you. Obviously, it was me. Um, yeah. But, but uh, no, I think you're right, and it's wonderful to see. Uh, and and actually, like you, you've hit a couple things that make me want to talk about, you know, the kind of the the modern promotion of goth music because you mentioned, mm -hmm. you know, how you're you're sacrificing consistency for what feels right, and I totally agree with that. But I think that that do you, do you feel that that works better now? Because I I don't think while there are still bands out there making albums, and I love you know seeing complete works from start to finish. Uh, I feel like like between the the Bandcamp Fridays and how they have kind of accentuated uh, quick releases, like getting more releases rather than one large release. Between that sure. and, like you said, the uh, proliferation of sites like TikTok that are all about sound bites and quick, quick little bits, um, do you feel like it, it, it that therefore actually kind of works better in your desire to keep evolving the way you sound? Yes. <laughs> you want me to elaborate a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah. Go uh, for it. <laughs> um, I we did the thing interviewers should never do. I asked a yes or no question. Sorry. No, it's fine, but you, you kind of touched on everything that I probably would have said, and it, it, so I didn't feel I needed to add a lot, but I will add a bit because um, we made a decision, like a really conscious decision, like early on, that we were going to, we will do an album one day, it's going to happen, but we're going to wait till we have that one song that kind of has a moment Oh. We'll know when it happens. We haven't sort of put a number on it, but we'll know when we've got the right level of attention that we think it's worth having an album. You start because... finding yourself ending up on other people's Spotify playlists and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of started, but like, I don't know, I want to see big numbers. I want to know that we have a, a fan base who are actually going to listen to it all because we looked into this and most people listen to the first one or two, maybe three songs of an album, especially if it's a band they're not, invested in i'm an album guy like if i am interested in someone i'm going to listen to your entire discography back to back until i'm sick of it that's how i am but i appreciate that most people are very much songs like the shorter the better um so that's why all of our songs are slightly different genres i think they're all tied together with the hurtsful dna but we do kind of tiptoe out into post-punk and synth pop and um, you know, slightly different sounds, and that works so well in the streaming era because um, you can be on all different types of playlists. Um, so, yeah, this is working for us. So for now, we're probably going to keep dropping singles, maybe an EP, just to test the waters. Um, I mean, you could always do the thing that I see popping up now where you grab some people to, to remix either your latest single or the previous ones, and then that's an EP. There you go. You got like five songs there, uh, one or two originals, and a bunch of remixes. You're good to go. Yeah, I mean, I don't really like seeing those. If I'm honest, like, I don't know if you use Spotify, but they've got like that release radar, and it's now just remixes. So I'm just kind of like, I want new material. I don't want to hear. But you know. But again, I'm not the average listener, so you've got to kind of move with the times. Um, well, but I like that you're making the music that you want to listen to. Because, yes. Because that's... That, that, 
I feel like that is a slight difference uh, than making the music you want to make. I think I mm-hmm. think you can you can do both, but like. I know that there are people that make the music that they want to make, but it's not really something that they would necessarily listen to normally. And vice versa, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like a balancing act, isn't it? It's kind of like making use of the way the world is now and and all the opportunities and kind of staying true to yourself. And I think you can balance the two. You know, you don't have to just like, sell out and do everything like TikTok and you know dance to it and everything's 30 seconds long but at the same time you don't have to release you know an album where every song is 20 minutes long and because you're a real artist like you can be a real artist and dip into social media and you know what I mean yeah you've got to kind of as long as you're being true to yourself and the focus is the actual music um how you promote it yeah, it's good, but I do see some bands, and I will not say anything because that's their business. I'm not going to name and shame, but you see somewhere they're just doing promotion, and I'm seeing them everywhere on every platform, but the music is unoriginal, shall we say, uninspired, maybe yeah. not something I would listen to, and I don't know who is, but they're doing a hell of a lot better than we are because they're out there constantly, but I don't know. Are they still going to be here in five years, ten years? I think Hurtsful will be. Um, because we're doing what we love, so that is sustainable long term, yeah. you know? Because, yeah. No, I don't that, mean to sound like a music snob, but. No, no. If you're a music snob, then I'm a music snob. Because, yeah, let's be music snobs together. Yeah, let's go for it. <laughs> um, because I kind of feel the same way. Um, like. You know, I I am just doing these shows. Uh, used to be out of my bedroom, and now my my lovely fiance he lets me uh, he let me like cordon off a, a room in our once we got in a, a a big old apartment together. He let me cordon off an office to make a studio out of it. But I'm just kind of hanging out in here in front of a green screen doing these things. Um, and cool. yeah, and and. Not always like the best at promoting myself, uh, but it's all about just doing it because I love it. Five years down, I'm still here. Five years later, I'm still going to be here playing your music, hopefully, because you will still be here. I'm banking on it. Yeah. <laughs> and so All and of that. So, although that does, you know, be- beg the question, like, is there a goal? For Hertz Fall, or are you just making the music as long as it's fun to make the music? Mm. Okay, is there a goal? No, no, there's not really. I mean, the goal is to keep making music that we genuinely love um, and to keep improving. Um, and if something comes of it, then amazing um but we've sort of seen some contracts um and their shit so (laughs) it's you know what i mean like it's got to be a good one i'm not saying all record labels are terrible but i hear horror stories from other bands shall we say and it's sort of like basically you're in debt to them for life for your advance because you didn't sell enough tickets or whatever and it's like and they don't even promote them and then you're like stuck on their roster for 10 years you can't release anything because they own everything that you do but they're not promoting you so you can't make money but you owe them the money i'm just like that sounds terrible i'm sorry oh yeah that sounds awful (laughs) and i know that's not everyone so i'm not saying never never like if a label wants to make a good offer obviously we're gonna look at it and you know take each offer as it comes but so far we've not seen any um that that are worth it so we're quite happy being independent um so if something good comes of it if we can make a living just doing that it's possible we'd probably take it but there's not a goal there's not a time frame it's just we're going to keep doing the best we can and um what 
to me, I was talking about this in a different interview, actually, not, not too long ago. To me, success is now getting as many people who would like our music to hear it. So that, to me, would make me happy if I know that everyone who possibly might like it has reached it, whether that's 50 people, 1,000 people, 2 million people. I, I don't know, but that would make me happy. Do you get what I mean? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I Which am... is why I love playing shows. Like, even if there's just 10 people, mm -hmm. if just one of them really gets it and, and feels the lyrics and the music and everything, it was worth the show, you know? You, you look out there and there's one person that's singing along and... Yeah, you find and that they, they come up to you afterwards, and I love that. It's like, I'll sign anything, I'll do selfies, whatever. Like, I love all that. It's it's just so genuine, and mm -hmm. I, I, I hope, I hope you get all the success you deserve, but I also hope that success doesn't change you. That, because you see bands that, that used to do that with fans, and then once they're, they're playing, like, you know, 20 shows a month. Uh, I understand that, you know, it's exhausting to do so, but I do feel like that, that some bands kind of change in the way that they approach shows and their fans. And I, I hope that doesn't happen to you. I hope you, you continue to have this joy about what you're doing. I promise to stay real. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, Pat. I will be real. We just no matter got... how big we get. We if we're as big as Depeche Mode, I, I will still be real. I hope so. <laughs> we just got the first raid, Twitch raid, that ever happened during Subculture Talks. So, uh, Shinobi Geisha, thank you for raiding. We're currently uh, speaking with uh, Hertzfall, with Sam of Hertzfall. Uh, close to the end of the interview, but then the after party is going to be up next, so stick around. Um, so, so kind of like we talked about how there's not a goal Mm -hmm. Do you have any plans like for the immediate future, though? We do. We absolutely do. Um, so you may have heard of a little band called Skeletal Family. Yes, I love Skeletal Family. Right. So we are supporting them in December this year um, in Leeds, which is like arguably where goth started, as we understand it, um, as a subculture. Um, so that just feels amazing to be honest um really looking forward to that possibly another festival in sheffield in december and um, this is both in the uk um we have just finished writing we've only written one song in 2022 but it's a really good song it's a really good one it's it's worth it it's worth the wait and i'm recording vocals in two weeks hopefully we'll have that out before christmas you gotta get, get it out before the the sub shock 2020 uh the 2022 voting begins you know yeah uh yeah yeah Th that is really high on my priority list <laughs> it is I'll, I'll get it sorted just for you <laughs> uh, no seriously i'd like to it I would be the first first time since uh, 2019 you weren't featured in the roster though yeah, yeah, saying all the right things because I just I want to be on it. <laughs> it's always nice to see our name up there with all these amazing artists. So, yes, um, we'll work on that. I hope it's ready by then. But it's a really good song. We we previewed it at our last gig um, locally, and everyone seems to love it. Like, what is that song? What is that song? It's a little poppier than what we've done before. It's still very goth. I would say it's comparable maybe to like the mission or ooh, even a little ooh. bit him in places oh you maybe. are speaking my language um, now yes it's it's just good i, you, I won't say too much more you, you just had me hear. at the mission okay yes oh. it's kind of yeah gothy and smooth but kind of gallopy and i can you know. see you doing a doing wayne hussey's voice justice too yeah so, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely um, working on some covers too. Again, I maybe won't say what, but I think you'll probably be surprised um, by what they are. We used to do a Forest by The Cure, and people absolutely loved that. Um, but you know, who hasn't covered a Forest? We need to maybe do something a little bit different. So we're gonna spread out a bit. Um, what else is going on? 
I think that's about it. As I said, you know, considering maybe a slightly longer release at some point, but we're in no rush. Um, I would love a video for our new single. Um, might come out around the same time as the track, might come out later. You know, we're very chilled. <laughs> we'll do what we can and what we want. Um, but what you can expect is for us to keep doing something. Um, we're never just gonna rest on our laurels and, you know, or take long breaks or something like, you know, we'll always be doing something, whether it's gigging, recording, um, writing, um, you can expect to see a lot more from Hertzful. I'm looking forward to it. Sam, thank you very much for being on the show. Did you have, uh, uh was there is it time that... already? I know. I told you it was going to fly. <laughs> yeah, by. it flew. It flew. So, uh, Hertzfall UK is all your socials, basically, right? Including Bandcamp. Yeah, I yep. think so. At Hertzfall UK. Yep. Yeah. And uh, so, is there anything else you wanted to, to leave with us before I uh, cut you loose and let you go to sleep? Because it's a lot later there than it is here. Or earlier, depending on your perspective. <laughs> Um, anything else I want to say just thank you so much for for having me on and for your continued support through all these years because like you know it, I think we have more listeners in the States than we do in the UK on most of our platforms and I'm sure that is just down to, to DJs and uh, promoters like yourself um, so yeah, thank you so much from, from me, from all the guys for that. Um, and to anyone listening, um, give us a listen, listen to Hertzfall because people seem to like us and I think you will too. So folks, if you're tuning in live up next is the after party, a beat match mix show. I'm going to start off with a track from Hertzfall and then just kind of, uh, blend from there. I have no idea what I'm going to play. It, it evolves as it goes. Uh, and if you're watching live on, or if you're watching recorded on YouTube, then uh, you know that you need to go check out Hertzfall on uh, Bandcamp and follow them on social media. Give them a listen because you will be very happy. Sam, thanks again. Have a great night. Thank you so much.